Harry is blackmailed by Meghan and Doria. His tyranny and his court make it a certainty. There's a lot going on behind the circus, and I have a lot of thoughts on these too. But if I actually spoke about my beliefs, people would think I was crazy and be buried under the guise that Meghan and her PR team want to convince us. Harry was targeted, because he's easily manipulated and to this day doesn't even understand what reality is. I read the courtroom testimony the other day, and couldn't help but wonder if the political ambitions discussed regarding Meghan and now Harry aren't actually in the United States, but rather in the UK, I heard something about it. Harry and Meghan were getting ready for an interview somewhere. I can't remember exactly where I heard this, it's hard to know what to believe when it comes to the media. But when I think about the way Harry has behaved since the start of their marriage, I think he was obviously blackmailed. What is he trying to insinuate in this article? Nevertheless, I mean, the article basically suggests that Harry was insinuating that Meghan was being treated submissively, and the very suggestion of that pisses me off, because Meghan was embraced by the public, because Harry's wife and the media loved her. That's a lot more than Catherine could say about what she went through in the beginning, even the press, when it comes to William and Catherine. The wedding was marred by many nasty comments about the bottom of the suits being normal. Young body like millions of other bodies out there, you'd think she was walking around looking like paper ash the way people were talking about her. Well the tide has turned against Meghan for the behavior, but when Harry goes to court he really goes to town, and who else has ever thought of using the courtroom as a public arena to attract the attention? and publicity for the sole purpose of building a bigger following in his quest to try and surpass his father, the King. I in fact. Harry gets special treatment from the court, because surely you or I would have dismissed our case if we hadn't shown up on the first day of the hearing and asked about his bad behavior. Do you know what we know? The bodies would be held in contempt of court, and we would be locked up and the same would have happened to Meghan when she committed perjury. If she hadn't married Harry. People often call Harry a new royal, he is emotionally literate, dot he is racially aware that he woke up green. Well, he says he's friendly, but he still has nothing to do with former royals. He is the metrosexual prince. Guess we could say he also occasionally eats fast food, as we learned and saved. Well, that's the one to put over there, but I don't believe it. I wonder if Harry is really that modern. If he really is just an escapee from the prison of aristocratic prejudice, then why on earth is he still carrying his weight as a prince? Why does he always raise a blue finger at the government, the media, even ordinary people? Why does he seem so much more empowered than even his father, the king, new royal, whatever? When I see Harry in action, if he rages against tabism, the Tory administration, I have a truly chilling vision of what it must have been like when the English lived under monarchs, who had real power when people had to submit to the arrogant decrees of people whose high position came entirely from the sperm of the father. I in fact, Harry embodies this pre-modern, imperious style far more than any other member of his family. He's a tyrant. He is the only senior cabinet member who uses his principles for political purposes. I mean, why was the civil war fought? Not in my opinion, the most disgusting thing about the phone hacking trial so far has been the way Harry persecuted the government. Let's forget the alleged behavior of the Daily Mirror, the Sunday Mirror, and the people, who Harry has all accused of hacking into his phone to get stories. No, it was Harry's scolding of a company that upset me the most. Harry used his high court testimony to say that the media and government are at a minimum in the UK, and that Britain is judged globally by the state of the current administration. Democracy fails, said Harry. When the government and the newspapers lie down to maintain, as Harry said, the status quo. I'm doing well. First of all, if Harry thinks we're going to hear lessons about democracy from someone whose public cloud is a product of medieval royal lineage ideology, then he must be even crazier than I didn't think so. And second, what does he do now? The Guardian says that Harry calling with its attacks on the government is okay, let's say it most clearly here. 
It is unacceptable for Harry to make such an interference. It's not his job to do that. Harry is not a typical citizen. Is the son of the king's fifth in line to the throne? I mean, go for Harry now taking advantage of his inherited royalty to criticize the chosen representatives of the United Kingdom is such a slap in the face of this nation's great historic struggle to control the power of monarchs and expand the power of the people. The king asked Devo to do something. You see in my mind Harry has two simple choices. Either he can keep his political views to himself, or he will stick to those of an ordinary citizen. He will become a normal commoner, and in this case he will be able to say what he wants to say. But then, of course, there's his fear of the tabloids. And it also reminds me of the despotic tendencies of royalty of yore, who absolutely hated low media, and their revival of the I think we can all agree that it's not a good thing to hack into someone's phone, although we still don't know what merit there is to Harry's claim that it was done to him on an industrial scale, as he said. The Mirror Group newspaper, but there's something very disturbing about Harry's one-man crusade to change the media as he describes it, because isn't that what the old Star Chamber wanted to do to change the media to be less radical, all in the name of the monarch? And isn't that what George III also tried to do when he issued a warrant for the arrest of this freedom of the press hero? John Wilkes after criticizing the king in his diary. North of Brittany. Isn't that what the royals were trying to do when they persecuted them? Daniel, Isaac Eaton, the great radical journalist of the 18th century prosecuted eight times between 793 and 812, mainly for publishing seditious libels against the monarchy. I get that Harry probably didn't pay attention during the story. But if he had, he would have understood that fire like in the UK was a fight for the right to mock kings and princess. So any Englishman who appreciates this freedom must be disgusted when Harry now asks who the hell controls the newspapers. And that's what Harry asked for this week. Who watches the press? Well, definitely not you. Even Harry and Harry's hatred of the low press makes him look like a complete snob. If you read his book Spare, you'll see what I see in store. Harry says the really scary part of the tabloid phenomenon is that some readers actually believe their nonsense. Harry also wrote about people who tell stories day after day and come to believe them without even realizing it, because according to Harry, you see, we're a bunch of idiots who can't make up their minds about anything and so Harry, since he has this Windsor blood and he is so much better than us. He feels he has a moral duty, as the Guardian puts it, to change the media. Harry sticks his nose into the relationship. Where is the? Well, it seems the left are so much themselves that they are just encouraging it instead of warning everyone about what can happen when royalty uses their undeservedness to try and go after the press to the people and the government. Guardian columnist Owen Jones wrote Harry Roast, the British press. Imagine if Owen had existed around 250 years ago, wholly owned by John Wilkes. You might say that stopping your anger at the media doesn't give you the right to try to silence it. I'm afraid freedom of the press is far more important than your little hurt feelings.